This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. Amy and I are excited about this next category because we both love animation. <sighs> oh man, Toy Story 4 has it in the bag. I mean, I can see you calling it the best, but do you really think they're gonna give it to another Pixar movie? Oh, absolutely. This is some of the best animation they've done in years. Now, I don't like the Lion King remake either, but you can't deny how amazing the animation was. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave it to them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. are we all just forgetting about How to Train Your Dragon 3? That was one of the best endings to any series I've ever seen. Hold up, did you guys not see Frozen 2 or something? No. 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 Oh, look, they're announcing it. Missing Link. What? One of my favorite studios working in the industry today is Leica. Leica, if you're unfamiliar, is behind some of the best animated films of, I'll say it, all time. Kubo and the Two Strings felt like a huge step forward for stop motion animation as it built a world full of interesting colors and textures. Corpse Bride brought the Tim Burton vision to life in ways no other film could by making an animated Timothy Chalamet. Coraline scared the shit out of millions of kids upon its release. The kids that leaned into it, they're all probably film students now, guilty as charged. They essentially were the one studio that everyone looked at as, oh come on, just give them the award already. So then they made Missing Link, one of their more average films and the Golden Globes went, that's the one. Missing Link is about a Sasquatch who goes by Mr. Link, AKA Susan, who with the help of an explorer named Sir Lionel Frost, who just happens to be looking to prove the existence of a Sasquatch journeys to find his lost relatives. Now, let me make it clear. I don't hate Missing Link, nor do I think it is a bad movie. I actually think it's one of the better animated films to come out in the last few years visually. But there is something about this film that even before winning the award for best animated feature is so aggressively mediocre. So I've condensed what I feel are the reasons for this film's main problem into three relatively strong points. I recently made a video on Pixar, and when talking about Monsters, Inc., I realized that a great duo is a crucial part of what makes any film so memorable. Now, how would you define a great duo? There isn't exactly a correct answer for this, although if we were to start anywhere, difference in size is clearly something every movie ever has taken into consideration. The closest thing compared to Missing Link that I can think of is Buddy and Walter from Elf. You have this tall figure who is kind of clueless because he spent most of his life away from society, and a shorter, more stubborn character who finds purpose in having this other guy around, but would rather it be someone else. The idea that opposites attract is true even in this scenario, and something fundamentally flawed about Missing Link is that these two don't attract. And there are a few reasons, but one small thing that may feel strange to hear is the voice acting. Hugh Jackman as Sir Lionel Frost? No problem. Definitely brings the deadpan comedic delivery that is necessary to support Mr. Link's goofs. Zach Galifianakis was not a good choice for this character. I love him as an actor, and I can see how on paper this may seem like a good idea, but when you see the character and you hear the voice, it just doesn't match. He seems too awake and aware and way too witty to be as stupid as he is. He doesn't fully commit to the personality the film sets him up to be, which leaves you walking away with a character that feels like nothing more than a comic relief. If he didn't look like a Sasquatch, this would be one of the least interesting protagonists probably ever. This isn't to say I think he should have been voiced by Larry the Cable Guy, but there's a reason Toe Mater and Lightning McQueen work so well together. One of them is smooth, cool, dare I say sexy, and one of them is literally rusty, beat up, and insanely unlikable. Now yes, this makes for a pretty annoying movie, but it makes for an entertaining and memorable pair. Walter is a stereotype of a quiet, reserved, and impatient New Yorker, and Buddy is loud, unapologetic. Will Ferrell does a great job at making it clear that this is Walter's nightmare. As a result, you get a pair that is memorable and entertaining. Mr. Link and Sir Lionel Frost are like one smart guy and one dumb guy. See what I'm saying? If we spend more time thinking about it, of course we could come up with some bigger differences. Like sure, Mr. Link represents false expectations for Lionel Frost and the way they handle that is cute and well done, but not in a necessarily memorable way. These differences should be more visible and more audible to the audience or else what is so special about this pairing? There's a moment in the third act of Missing Link where they approach this big icy castle that with this kind of animation is honestly really nice to look at. You're like, oh man, this is gonna be so cool. I hope we get to explore this castle. Oh, uh, wait, why are we? Oh, it's just another bridge ending. Fun tip that I learned after this, if you're ever watching an animated movie and they find themselves at a long bridge, that bridge is gonna be a problem at some point. There's one cool thing about this that adds a little bit more tension to the scene, and it's the fact that this isn't just any ordinary bridge, this is an icy bridge. Well, actually the ice doesn't play that big of a role in the scene. All I'm saying is why wasn't a tongue stuck on an icicle ever utilized? Like it would have been a funny thing if the hand fell and everyone screamed and closed their eyes and when they realize they're not still falling, they pan up and Mr. Link's tongue is stuck on an icicle and he's like, I did it or something. Sure, maybe that's not that realistic, 
realistic, but it would have been way more memorable than this. Consider this my pitch to Leica to let me help write one of their movies, even though that will never happen anyways. Endings in animated films are often so overlooked. Leica themselves are behind one of my favorite endings ever, the Coraline one. I mean, this kind of image is burned into my brain in a great way. It really made my little boy mind go, haha, what the f***? The ending of any movie, really, is the last thing your audience is going to experience before they have that option to never think about that movie again, which is probably why so many movies end with dance sequences or songs. Why not stick a little worm in their ear for them to hum the rest of their day and be like, where did I hear this again? Oh right, legendary film School of Rock, directed by Richard Linklater. There really isn't much more to say than that. Missing Link, forgettable ending, forgettable ending, forgettable movie, it's like PEMDAS or whatever that math thing is called. What was the message? Why is this movie being told? How are we going to make that message heard through the film? These are questions that no matter how big the movie, no matter what type of movie, should always be thoroughly asked by any filmmaker before making the movie. Now this is just my opinion, but you can write a story and film it, but if that story isn't serving a purpose, or at least serving a purpose that will have a lasting effect on the audience, what's the point? I even ask this when I make YouTube videos. My most forgettable videos are always those that feel like they serve little to no purpose, like my Us video, or my Forgettable Movies video, ironically enough. This applies to a lot of things, and Missing Link, while still a cute and fun time, doesn't feel like it ever makes its message clear enough, or at least in a way that feels original. The final line of the Google synopsis reads, through it all, they learn that sometimes one can find a family in the places one least expects. If they had copy and pasted that from some other animated film synopsis, I would be like, okay, yeah, makes sense. And once again, it's just weird to me that this is a movie to come out of Leica, a studio known for releasing films that felt outside of the box compared to the rest of the films in their field. So this leaves us asking, what is the message of Missing Link? What should have been the message of Missing Link? And why does this matter? The message is that looks can be deceiving, and in the most unexpected circumstances, you may find yourself a new best friend or something like that. The message should have been something like Sir Lionel Frost coming to terms with the morals of looking at this creature as a goal rather than a human, perhaps Sir Lionel Frost learning how to show love for another person all over again. Perhaps Perhaps use Mr. Link less as an annoyance for gags and more as a lesson. Karsten, why does this matter? Hey, it doesn't. You don't have to do any of this. Pouring all this money and talent and lack of creativity into something so cookie cutter isn't hurting anyone besides maybe a few people's wallets, but it also isn't doing anything great. But who says you need to be great all of the time? If everyone is great... <laughs> No one will be. Maybe you just wanted to make a quick buck and show something colorful for the kids while showcasing some visually stunning stop motion animation. Nobody is upset about Missing Link. We're just disappointed, I guess. Animation is a style of filmmaking where you can explore any idea out there with any character out there to make something that could very well be accessible to every person out there. But it's also just a lot of fun to look at. So if you want to make a movie about a Sasquatch making a bunch of poop jokes, go right ahead. Just know I will probably forget about it if it doesn't end with Jack Black shredding cords with some kids. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Before you head out though, I wanna give a quick thank you to this week's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, Squarespace, if you didn't already know, is a place where you can take that idea that you've had and turn it into a website, whether it be a blog, an online store, a portfolio, you name it. They have a wide array of award-winning designer templates that, in my opinion, look pretty great. If you think you're not that great at websites, don't worry, they have 24-hour customer service that'll walk you through whatever problems you had. My mom has used it, my friends have used it, I've used it, and I think we can all agree that it is a very simple process. Once you're ready to launch your website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase. So basically what I'm saying is there's no reason not to give this a shot. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.